Hello, I'm Gareth Ike. Now, a few weeks ago on Gareth Ike Tonight, I had the pleasure of talking to Kim Staten. Kim is the film director responsible for A Trust Fall, a very powerful and must-watch documentary about Julian Assange and the war on press freedom. The film was shown this week for one day only at 88 Odeon cinemas across the UK. That's something Kim and Julian's family would like to have extended as it's vital that people understand just what's happening to Julian at the hands of the state. Now, before we welcome Kim onto the show, let's take a look at the trailer for a trust fall. This is generally the view of people, oh, we don't know much about Assange. Well, you should know, because whether you know it or not, he is fighting for you. For your courage and leadership and tenacity in journalism and publishing. Since 2010, Assange has been held in progressively narrower, darker, colder, and crueler spaces. He has been detained since the 7th of December 2010 in one form or another. And we are now here after years of imprisonment. WikiLeaks is a non-state hostile intelligence service. I think the man is a high-tech terrorist. A high-tech terrorist. A traitor, a treasonous. He has to answer for what he has done. Assange faces up to 175 years in prison for publishing classified documents exposing U.S. war crimes. The U.S. government narrative about Julian is a complete fraud. It is a complete fraud from A to Z. Julian took on the most powerful countries in the world, basically all of them. We now have confirmed that there were plans to kidnap Julian here in the center of London or even assassinate him. No one who instigated that illegal and immoral war has been brought to justice. But the great truth teller sits behind bars. If wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. Julian Assange is a hero. What if everything we thought we knew about somebody was a lie? Would we be willing to go on a new journey of understanding? This is a story of deception, lies, bravery, and a man who risked everything to bring the truth to light. Mr. Assange shows all the symptoms that are typical for a person that has been exposed to psychological torture over a prolonged period of time. He looked at me intensely and said, I hate to say this. He then hesitated, visibly troubled and searching for words, and then he finally said, please, save my life. May future generations have the ability to speak without restraint. May our children and their children know truth and have access to information that leads to justice. Wherever Julian goes, free speech goes with him. If there is a bird that is about to take flight, stretch her wings and rule the skies. May it be a pista and no longer a bald eagle. If you think Assange is a traitor, he's a rapist, he's a narcissist, he's a hacker, I don't blame you because you have been deceived. And if you think you've not been deceived, that's normal because otherwise it wouldn't be deception. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. Now, before we talk about the film, what, what's the situation now in regards to Julian Assange? Well, on the 20th and 21st of February, Gareth, uh, there was a high court hearing in London where it was expected that there would be a decision handed down as to whether uh, Assange could be extradited to the US into the hands of his tormentors or whether an, a, one more appeal would be heard. Uh, the UK High Court asked the US for assurances on uh, three different points uh, and they were given seven weeks to provide the assurances. The first uh, point was in regards to that Julian would have free speech First Amendment protections even though he's an Australian citizen. Uh, the second one that uh, being that uh, if he was extradited to the US and went on trial uh, that he would 
uh, his uh, charge wouldn't be upgraded to a capital offence, which would potentially carry a death penalty. Uh, and then the third one, um, that as an Australian citizen, he wouldn't be prejudiced against um, not being an American citizen. So they came back on the very last day of that seven-week period um, to hand in this, these assurances and basically came back with standard assurance uh, on the, the matter of uh, the free speech, uh, the, sorry, the, the death penalty assurance, uh, standard assurance on that. And then in regards to his free speech, free speech protections, uh, it was a non-assurance. They said that he could seek to apply to have this protection. So uh, based on that, um, now, now the next hearing is on the 20th of May. It's basically a repeat of this situation, uh, except that they have those assurances and non-assurances in their hand. Um, and uh, really anyone's guess what's going to happen. Uh, my prediction is that uh, they will allow this final appeal. Uh, Julian will be kept in solitary confinement 22 hours a day in a maximum security prison for another six months. Um, and if you look at the timeline of that, it's quite interesting because if you add 20th of May plus six months, it takes you brilliantly past the next US election. And it seems apparent that uh, Biden and the Democrats don't want to have a journalist arrive in handcuffs uh, on a CIA plane into America. No, it feels like kicking the can down the road, I have to say. I, I felt that for the last couple of hearings that it's just a case of they probably want him to die in prison, if we're honest, so that they don't have to you know, deal with it. Um, for people at home that are watching this, how can they help in terms of stopping the extradition to the US and ultimately, you know, securing Julian's freedom? Because I feel, you know, we're sort of sat on the sidelines a bit and it's kind of like, what can we do as a society? Well, I think the number one thing is that we need to speak up and voice our opinions. Um, you know, make a meeting with your MP, your local MP, express yourself, let them know that this is not okay. Um, you know, there's so many things that we can do to help sign every petition that you can find. Uh, you know, just tell everyone about this, uh, raise your voice. I, I met with my local MP um, on, on Tuesday uh, here, here in Australia, had a discussion with her. She's a member of the Labor Part Party, Justine Elliott, uh, and it's a Labor government we have over here un under Al Anthony Albanese. He keeps just repeating this vacuous mantra, enough is enough, bring it to a conclusion. In this meeting, she basically repeated that again. Uh, and I challenged her to that. And I said to her, um, have you ever taken the time to study this issue? Have you ever read a book about Assange, the, the Assange predicament? Have you ever watched any film about it? And she had not. Uh, she admitted that. And, uh, and I did convince her to watch The Trustfall um, because it's in, still in cinemas here four months after release here in Australia. And um, you know, she, she showed some interest in it and I'm hoping she comes along. Um, I really urge people to uh, watch this film because it's, it's currently in cinemas in the UK and uh, it's an opportunity for people to go from, you know, zero to 100 on this issue in just a space of two hours. The, the Trust Fall is a fantastic film, I have to say, Kim. I mean, it's uncomfortable watching at times, but it's fantastic nonetheless. How has it been received overall? It's been absolutely fantastic so far. You know, we would have um, been pleased if 20 cinemas in Australia ran it. We ended up having 150, 50 cinemas in New Zealand, uh, still going in these territories. Uh, in the UK, we've had uh, about 100 cinemas. Odeon has been a real champion of the film. Um, they're showing it tonight at 88 sites. And, uh, you know, all, all in all, it's been a fantastic start to the film. Um, and the big territories of the United States and Europe are still to come. I mean, getting the film in, in an Odeon cinema is a great achievement, mate, especially given the subject matter. Uh, how did that come about? How did you manage that? Well, uh, our distributor, Journeyman Pictures, um, did a great job with pitching it to the major chains here uh, in, in the UK. Um, I actually don't know much about how that came about. Um, you know, but we've had major chain interest in Australia and New Zealand. So each of the three territories, we've had major chains showing it, which is fantastic. That is great. So 88 cinemas in the UK as it stands, 
Is it just a case of if there's enough bums on seats, then that, that will extend? Absolutely. You know, that's what we've seen in Australia when the, the major chain here, Event Cinemas, initially booked um, three sessions at 35 sites and then the tickets sold well in pre-sales and then they added more sessions and they ended up doing 300 sessions. Uh, it is very much, it's a commercial environment and uh, we're competing with uh, all these other blockbuster films with massive budgets, 10 times the size of our advertising budget. Um, but, you know, we're competing with Godzilla. Uh, what's more scary, the US government or Godzilla? Yeah, <laughs> good point. I must admit, I, I was, was lucky enough to come to the premiere in London. I watched the film and, you know, I was in a room with people that know about Julian Assange. They know the situation or at least we thought we did to a certain level. And one thing I took away from that, Kim, was that there were audible gasps throughout the film from people that thought they knew everything about the Julian Assange situation because there were so many aspects to the film that you're like, oh my goodness, I, didn't, I had no idea just how, how dark this was and how nefarious this was and how this had happened and that had happened. So for people that don't know Julian's situation, the whole thing would just be mind blowing for them. I think it is. I think it's a really damning expose of the uh, the horrendous, uh, disgusting treatment that he, that has been dished out to one individual, um, someone that's a heroic, brave whistleblower. I mean, a publisher of whistleblower material, uh, done nothing wrong, and his his whole life has been just uh, turned upside down. They've gone after him after his bank balance, you know, to, to bankrupt him through dozens of legal cases. There's the, the defamation is just next level. Um, for 14 years now, they've pursued him uh, in one form or another, and he's been detained indefinitely and now uh, been in a, a six metre square cell in Belmarsh Prison uh, for over five years. Um, it's absolutely horrendous. And anyone with any kind of decency, if they sit down and see this story, um, they know what side they should be on on this issue. Absolutely. I think, you know, the most damning thing is you've got a guy incarcerated in one way or not in one form or another, whether it be in an embassy or in a prison cell, for, for well over a decade for exposing war criminals, while the war criminals are probably, you know, sat in a coffee shop right now enjoying a, a, a croissant and a cup of coffee. And you just think, where where is the justice in this? Um, just finally, Kim, how can people around the world watch the trustful if, you know, say they don't have a cinema that's showing it near them? Yeah, well, at the moment we're, we're sticking to cinema um, for a few reasons. One is that we feel that cinema is the most powerful environment to take in a film like this. Uh, you know, you have your completely focused attention, big sound, big screen, a sense of community sitting in a cinema. Um, you know, we also had to have 20 investors come on to make this film possible and we have to pay them back. So. You know, we have to operate in a profitable way. We can't just put it up digitally at this point. Um, but, you know, to, for a documentary to be in cinema is is a rarity. It's a special thing. And I really encourage people to um, come to the cinema showings while it's in cinemas. Uh, and, you know, meanwhile, wait for it to come out into those regions. But when it does come to your country, please embrace it. Suggest it to your local cinema. And when it's on, you know, grab your friends and family and come along and see it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Kim. And thanks again for making the film. I know I've said that to you before when we spoke, but it is a really, really powerful piece of work. And it's something that people really need to see because, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I thought I was well clued up on Assange and the situation and I didn't know the half of it. My great pleasure, Gareth. And thank you so much for your coverage of this important and urgent issue.